everyone, welcome back to a new video. I'm the Artistic Artist and today I want to talk about my story with my assistant's dog. So first things first, why am I um, in this kind of uh, different angle? Why am I filming with my phone and everything? That's because now while I'm editing uh, or looking at all the videos, I uh, realized that for some reason the first part of this video was not filmed, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, what a great start to come back to here. Um, basically, it starts when um, basically uh, the second part of this video, the one that was filmed, starts where everything went downhill so i just have to repeat the happy parts um it all started uh, with the first visit with magic uh, where i loved his personality um his way of acting and he kind of already accepted me uh, at that first meeting we went for a walk all um his trainer um my uh oh the kind of the one who was also a trainer but uh, more for me um, so would work with me and would help me to um, get to know the dog and work with the dog and all of those things you need to learn um, to have an assistance dog and she would help me during the process of getting to know him and until the final exam we have to make uh, to be a full like team together and that meeting went super well and I was like I don't have to um, sleep over and I was like yeah let's try it with him um, I felt really comfortable with him so I was happy and we started four weeks after that he came with uh, his trainer he came on a weekend with his trainer and um, the plan was that she's going to stay for the two days and help me um, get to know Magic and helps me with him getting to know me and my cats and, and kind of helps him get to know uh, the cats and me and help us to kind of in the first two days. And on the third day then uh, my trainer would come over and help us to get kind of started in the training process. So um, when she came, the trainer of uh, magic, I was kind of nervous and I told her for some reason, I um, worried that it's not going to work out. And she was like, why would it? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Um, it, it, we're so far now. Um, I'm so happy. I can't even believe it. Uh, we went on a walk together, we um, started the meeting process with my cats, which didn't go that bad actually. Um, it's And then we went for a walk and uh, got inside so he can meet the cats, which was um, not like super bad, it was like... Um, they were kind of like, oh, strange thing there, um, uh, making clear that there should be some distance uh, hissing, running away a little. Um, but once he came inside and uh, we waited for a few minutes, the cats were getting curious. Magic um, was the one who, when they hissed, he was like, kind of, oh, why? And he, he barked. So it was kind of, he was surprised, They he was scared, they were surprised, they were scared, normal um, meeting. And and then we tried to make him comfortable. Uh, we gave him some of his favorite treats when he was not barking at them and um, kind of chilling around them. So he knew that uh, he's safe here and the, how to uh, act around them and how they would be fine with him around. That's mainly what we did for the first day. She went back to get some food and rest and we decided that Magic would come with her for a few hours. 
So um, the cats can kind of recharge, he can recharge and I can recharge too because new things, you know, not the best for me. <laughs> but while it was a new thing, I was so happy and actually everything went well. Um, we thought uh, we are uh, a great team. We went on the evening walk then after that together and I decided he would sleep. Um, we'll, next to me uh, in my home uh, and she would go home alone basically I could have um, let him stay with her for that one day uh, but I was like let's jump into it um, and tonight went pretty sweet he was uh, a bigger as I thought especially when he uh, laid in my bed and he was like, I realized he's kind of, when he stretched out, um, close to my size. So um, while cats laying in your bed is just like a floof next to you, he was quite taking some space. And that was um, why I then a few days after decided it might be better when he uh, sleeps in his bed. Also, um, I realized that during the day we... Uh, he ends up getting himself into a lot of messy stuff and uh, also throughout the day it was just something to get uh, me more comfortable and uh, I kind of needed to get used to the situation and that's what we then decided and he was happy with it. He uh, greeted me in the morning then every time with his face like on a mattress and it was so cute. He was so caring and till this day um, and um, yeah the first few days were overwhelming for sure um, and I was nervous but it was also very special and he's a very well trained dog. On the second day, those are my cats. On the second day, um, we trained together, started to get closer. Uh, we went on a walk to see how everything works out and we worked together really great. Uh, I knew how to use the commands, he understood me and the way we walked, I uh, later heard from a trainer that um, the trainer of him, uh, of Magic, and she had contact and that we would have um, passed the exam at the end with the way we we worked together now. So we were a good team. And the way he was, uh, he was big, but he was so um, sweet, so caring and such a happy dog. It was it was really working out for us these two days. The third day uh, I first trained with the trainer. She only came for a few hours. We had before we had that morning walk and it was the first day where I was like starting to get used to having a morning walk and things were still pretty new, but that was the only thing that I had in mind. Uh, which was, um, I need to get used to this new situation. Everything else was pretty nice, actually. Hi everyone, hi everyone, um, welcome back. I moved since you can, since you can see, um, as you can see I moved and not only the place where I record but actual like flat uh, into my kind of real first own home. Because the other one was kind of just temporary and I didn't like make it me, uh, me-ish kind of, uh, the home didn't feel like 
that's Sophie's home. Sophie's, Sophie's. Uh, why do I say that? <laughs> I actually hate Sophie. <laughs> okay, it was Sophie's home. Um, but this one does feel like my home. And I'm not sure uh, about the kind of layout of my background. Actually, um, just so you know, that's <laughs> the tail of my cat. Uh, I built them um, things on the wall so they can climb around since they are only living in like a flat. But now at least we have a balcony where they can go out and enjoy. And yeah, they like to sleep there. And I'm really happy because now I didn't like pay for something they don't use anyway, <laughs> which happens far too often. But anyway, um, another thing in my background, which you maybe can see, yeah, you can, um, is this white um, splash, splotch, don't know, of paint. Uh, that's there because um, the boyfriend of a f really good friend of mine helped me actually to uh, put those climby things together. And I'm so happy for that. And um, we had a fail here. I think there was like, uh, we couldn't like put something in there because there's something behind here. And I needed to like fix it up. And uh, I don't have any of this paint left. So I thought of like painting something there. And then I decided it's a funny memory and I will keep it. So now you know the story behind this one. <laughs> But um, yeah, what's the rest of the background? Yeah, that's the huge um, windows. There's a wall full of windows, which is great because it's very, there's very much light coming in here. And uh, I say it so often. And yeah, that's like my couch that I bought because I wanted a bigger couch. And I'm very happy with that decision. I love it. And it still can like go out for friends to sleep over and turn into a bed. And yeah, I think I put the invitation out for a lot of friends to stay there if they want to. Yeah, that's about everything uh, about this new setup. So let's move on to the actual video which is me telling uh, about what happened with my assistant's dog uh, or how the whole situation like kind of ended up going down <laughs> and why I don't have uh, magic as an assistant's dog anymore and what's going to happen in the future. That's just a basic like update about the whole uh, assistant's dog thing and the next video I will do an update about why I didn't film and what all happened and yeah about that one so but let's start with this video and I'm going to grab my phone with the keys on because the new door can only be opened with a key even though it's not locked so I'm scared of losing my keys and uh, I put them on my phone <laughs> um yeah okay so it was around um yeah, me. It seems <laughs> I, I wrote everything down, so um, it seems to be May where I was getting the dog. Uh, not that I like forgot everything about him, it's just that I'm really bad at realizing what month we are in and uh, what day. That's just a summer thing of me, uh, and I forget the whole time thing. So, yeah, back to me. We actually decided to um, have him come over for a whole weekend with the trainer that like uh, raised him and taught him everything he knew by now. So we can get used to each other on, the, on that weekend. And then I will have recent um, like training days with my actual trainer and the person who was um, like caring for me at that and the person who was uh, caring for me at that. And yeah, she came over and it was actually really great. Uh, I was so happy uh, having 
my assistance dog finally here and being like it's happening it's happening it's happening it's going to be so great and that was uh, everything I could think about at first and I knew the change is very hard for me so I kept that in mind and uh, considering this the two days went quite great like I had moments um, on the first day I think after like we made a after we uh, went for a walk and talked a little and made him comfortable with my cats we uh, we talked about him staying here or uh, him going back with the trainer because she's going to like calm down and everything because uh, the trainer was going to like have lunch and uh, just have a few minutes for herself and then uh, after one two hours she will come back and I could leave him here or uh, she could take him back with her and we decided to um, and we did that and we decided that she will bring him back to her for many reasons a because this was all new to me and I needed like time to adapt and moments where I was alone and b because uh, the cats were uh, something new for magic something new uh, he hadn't yeah some new like uh, someone new that he has to get used to too with me also being uh, new for him and uh, we thought that it would be a great break for everyone else involved the cats were like actually at first I wasn't really uh, worried about the cats and the trainers weren't too like my specific trainer and the trainer of magic because magic lived with cats before the only thing uh, that we realized pretty quickly uh, was that um, my cats are way younger than their cats and more like playful and outgoing and everything so they were kind of stressing magic out and uh, that was something we thought was just like normal uh, getting used to something so that was like the first two days and then he stayed with him and then the next day we w I went on a walk with my trainer and things are going pretty well. And then for the week I just like had some times a week where I could just be with him. And like the first three days, two, three days, like I went on walks alone. He was with my family at uh, their home with me being there. So he could like enjoy their garden and the water there because like um, poodles apparently like their water dogs. I don't know how much they love water and it's also specific to the dog himself, but he enjoyed it quite a bit. He didn't go like in there and swim, but um, our, uh, but at our place you can, uh, but our swimming pond, not tomb. But our swimming man. But our swimming pond has like a shallow side where the plants are growing, and you're allowed to step on there at least as a dog. Uh, it was okay, so he like went there, drank something, played with the water, just walked in the water and had fun. And I was so happy seeing him, like being himself and. Uh, getting his energy out because I was scared at the beginning that I didn't know how to um, because I was scared at the beginning that I didn't know how to like show him things to enjoy like a break from like training with me and I said like 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 <laughs> okay so pretty positive uh, until now and so happy um i have to say something about his size uh when i thought of big dogs 
I thought we were like talking about golden retriever size and not like being uh, around my hip and higher than my hip. So that was a surprise uh, as I saw him, but I was so in love with his, but I was so in love with his personality that I didn't care a lot about his size, even though it usually would have intimidated me and I wasn't sure how I would react if his personality would suddenly change. But with his personality that he showed the first three days and uh, when I was like visiting him, I wasn't worried about that at all. So then the days went on and I was living in a flat at that point, but not like in, a, in the me flat. It was the flat where I was. Yeah, where was I? Uh, the card, the, um, what's it called in English again? Oh, boy. So there I am again, um, the card stopped working. Uh, don't know what's the reason, but it seems to work now and I hope it will work for the rest. Um, yeah, until that, everything's super positive. And now is where most of the mess started to happen. Uh, day by day, Magic himself turned more nervous and more barky and um, changed his personality. It was uh, something I at the at first it was something. Uh, that I wasn't at all worried about it was just something um, that was not that easy for me uh, changing to this new situation because uh, sounds can be very intimidating and the normal dog bark wasn't something that I thought would be intimidating but he's a big dog and he was able to bark so loud that it like it, uh, it's like a mini shock in me and I didn't think that would be so loud, so I was quite surprised. Yeah, but it was something where I was like, yeah, we need to work on that. And not me being like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. So uh, that was one thing that for me was like a realization because he wasn't like that at first. He He's not a barker that what everyone told me and um, him suddenly being so reactive didn't make sense and didn't match the personality that I was told he has and was seeing from him at first. He was actually, um, when I uh, first met him, what I was told and uh, what happened in the first two, three days, was that he was super like uh, happy and outgoing and not like shy and not super nervous and something like that. That all changed uh, day by day. It got worse. And that was um, the first time that I thought like, am I too, too bad at being a dog owner? Um, but on the other hand, mostly I thought it's just like stuff that happens at the beginning. And um, it's a while ago now, so um, even looking back, I can't really tell when uh, things got 
that was I think it was the next week because until then like I met with my trainer once and we uh, looked at him and tried to make him less reactive by showing him that for me that's not really um, helpful like I tried to study for tests and everything we did that which maybe was one of the mistakes we did it uh, when I was still learning when I was still studying for uni and so I needed time to actually study and to have like a calm time and it should we never thought that it would have been a problem because um, he was a dog that was very chill and just laid on the ground. But all of a sudden he got more and more reactive. And instead of him like chilling around me, he started to like um, react to everything around me and barking when someone opened the door of another flat and stuff like that. And I needed to constantly calm him down which was kind of the opposite from what uh, I was trying to get from an assistance dog. It was so I would calm down more. But a big thing to know and uh, something I uh, heard over and over again from uh, my friends in the assistance dog community is that um, at the beginning, things are going to get worse and then they will get better and... Um, one day I can't think of living without him anymore. And I really um, thought I was, I, and I really thought that what's going on. And at that point I was like frustrated and not that happy, but um, overall, like I was seeing the positive and just was like, well, it's going to be hard at the beginning. So um, nowhere at that time did I think of giving up at all. Uh, shortly before the weekend, I think we had another visit with my trainer and actually an another trainer too. So um, we tried for one person to be like out of the flat and doing stuff like falling, uh, letting things fall down, ramming something against the wall or making noises, uh, making it um, so he realizes that someone is out there and trying to tell him that it's fine and that he doesn't have to bark because uh, kind of I let him know that I realized it and I was like, um, thank you for letting me know, but it's fine and you can calm down and um, you don't have to like watch out for me at the moment. That's what we were trying to do. And when he was like getting um, kind of a little bit more about, yeah, but I don't care. I'm barking anyway. We had that thing of like uh, take a break where he was told to like lay on his specific plots, place. And so he could like, um, he was only there for like 30 seconds, but um he was getting the the kind of thing of calm down it's not about but it was just to uh let him know that it's not the time to um like be super active and uh um but it kind the but it was kind of a way to let him know that we are not going to have like training or anything and he doesn't have to be that loud it's not the time it's uh everything is okay and like get quiet or get get cal calm down basically but without saying calm down because that never works <laughs> as i made a video uh but it was a way to show him hey that's enough uh calm down kind of and then he was like in there for 30 seconds and then I went back and was like, okay, now you can come back. And uh, it worked and we were seeing progress only from those two visits and working on that. And I was so happy and um, thought like everything's great. The weekend ca came and it was, I was like very positive and the last day we like talked uh 
And the last day I talked to my uh, trainer, I was super happy and super positive and like things are going to get well now. And actually, I think we both thought that's it, that was the problem and now it's done. Over the weekend, it was kind of like, I thought like we were getting there, it was getting easier. And so I didn't like call or anything. I was just, um, when he barked, I did what I was told to do. And um, now I realize that it may sound like he wasn't allowed to bark. But um, that's not what's, what it was about. He had like, he was not, it wasn't just barking was the thing you could see but actually was tensing up being super nervous um it's like when somebody out there like closed the door of a car and there was that silent whoomp that would like make him jump up and bark and super loud and like in full-on uh, not attack mode but warning mode like oh my god there's something there's something like why are you so calm get out there see the thing it's moving oh my god that was kind of where he was and um i myself was getting in like the mother role and was calming him down but at the same time every time he did this i myself started to freak out internally and so it was something that was manageable, but it was not really good for my mental health because he was so nervous and that all the time and that day by day by day by day, it was uh, starting to get really exhausting for me. And then came Monday or Tuesday, I'm not sure, but I had a big test and that was the first time I took him with me for like an actual test to sit next to me and I thought that things were going to get better but um, being in a city we were just like sitting at a bank it's not a bank right or and so we went at uni and there was like um, in the middle of the the so we were uh, going to uni and uh, to the place where I was going to take the test and uh, around that place there was some greenery. So I just decided to sit somewhere and let him like enjoy nature and sniff a little bit because as far as I learned, uh, sniffing is a way for them to calm down. And so I thought I'm going to give him a lot of nature and him just doing whatever he wants and so he can like get everything out and be calm for the 60 for so he could like work out everything inside and so he could uh, get calm just for the test to be more relaxed for those 30 minutes that the test is going to take and uh, at first i thought everything is fine i gave him something to drink because it was super hot but then uh, people walked by and <coughs> but then people started to walk by and you need to know that's something that was never a problem for him he was so chill and everything was so fine and i was told that that's uh, where he's super calm and that's why we fit together so perfectly because he's um, constantly more on the calm side and those things don't stress him out and now we are here and he was stressing out so much that I was like um, like I had that mother instinct of calming him down but I didn't know how anymore and I tried to make him as comfortable as I thought he could get I gave him something to chew on I um, had water for him he could sniff everywhere around and by all means, I was not perfect. I was a beginner at all of this, but it was stressing me out because I thought I could not make him comfortable. And um, that was making me... And that gave me a bad feeling of like me not being able to handle him. And honestly, I thought it's mostly my mistake because 
I was the new one here and he had perfect training and the first days he was so good and just just a perfect dog like we were starting so well and there's like at the end you need to take an exam with the dog and you to see if everything works and I got the feedback that we would have passed it at the first two days even so that's where we started out but him but since he was staying with me everything just declined and so that was stressing me out too so um, all in all everyone was stressed out and that's when I called them or I think I just left a message and um, when uh, we talked we came to the point of him like what does he eat or does he eat and I just said well um, he left something in his bowl but I thought it's just the hot weather so for me it was not a warning sign at all and I just casually talked about it. And then the next day uh, we just talked and that we will meet and look at this problem again. And when she came, I was all happy and uh, the dog was super happy and we walked in pretty happy. But suddenly I realized that she's not smiling, which is a bad signal I learned. And when she just started to talk, I realized why. She uh, talked to the trainer of the dog and um, they had a long talk uh, after we we uh, texted and we, she called me and we were thinking about meeting the next day. She actually called the trainer and they talked about everything of his like changing, um, his manner completely changing and everything that happened. And at that point, they thought that it's the cats that were the problem. They thought that he would just never calm down and that he would not. And that that made him so super stressed out so that he was not getting enough sleep. And then he was constantly like every movement he thought cats would like crawl over him and that was too much for him. That's what he thought was all that was happening at that time. And the another thing was that I was like still constantly going to uni and work. And from the beginning, I involved my parents in this. So he was like in the garden or uh, while I was working, he was like running with my mother or something like that because my mom loves to run. So they just ran together around like the whole place. And she was like, so happy about him she told me how how super nice he was and um, he listened to her and everything was great so I never thought that that was a problem but um, for him to be at so many places they told me not being able to get used to just me was also a stressor and uh, was also making things worse. So at the beginning, I thought my um, me we started at the wrong time. I it would have been pet. So uh, to sum it all up, the things we thought was that we just started at the wrong time. Uh, it would have been better if I was like in summer break and had like two three weeks where I just was with him. And uh, not start like shortly before summer, but in those exam weeks, which I I could understand. But with me planning to move in summer, it was kind of better for me to get used to a new dog, like a new family member, and then move on top and not everything at the same time. But for him, it apparently would have been far better to just be at that no new home, and we have we spent uh, three weeks together. So that's the first thing, and the second thing we thought were the cats. So um, she ended up concluding that either I find a way to like give him a lot of space without the cats. Or um, he needs to search for another family and we just don't fit together. And 
all in all, she decided to take him with her because the thing that he wasn't eating that much was the point where she started to think that it is serious what's going on here and that it's not just we need to accommodate more. So I completely understand. Her. So I uh, completely... And I completely trusted her because I'm the new one. And she, when she tells me that he's not good at all, uh, I will do everything for him to be uh, healthy and happy because um, all in all, I care a lot about uh, the, the pets and I love animals. So if something's wrong, I will always try to overlook what's going on in me because I was like no I don't want to give him away in my insides but of course if he's so unwell then he needs to go back back to her so that's what happened because uh, what I decide uh, for one or the other uh, she needed to get some time in an environment where there are no cats and there's only one person looking for him so he could like calm down and get back to his uh, old self basically so that was the first time I actually uh, posted on Instagram that he's gone now and um, what happened in the next weeks I will go into detail um, in my what happened and why I was gone uh, kind of f video that I plan next but for him and I for him and I yeah for him and I that was kind of a point where we at the moment didn't think that we will go on at all and it was so sad and even though uh, I was stressed out and everything, I really loved him and I really had this connection with him starting to get there. And when we said goodbye to each other, we were cuddling and he knew something was up and I was trying to like give him all the love that I could um, show him that uh, I care about him, I deeply care, but um, I want him to be in a safe environment for him. And uh, actually the trainer also was pretty uh, sad. You could see it and she was so sorry that she needed to take him with her. And all in all, we were all sad that this happened. What this was, what I now realize looking back, was the point where things started to change inside me because I was trying to protect myself from that loss and go on some way but I wasn't able to go on but because I thought now finally things are going to happen and I'm going to start this new life in my new home with my assistant's dog and everything was planned out uni was also planning stuff so this could happen and everything was set to go and I didn't think that things could turn out that bad and that really got me and changed me without me knowing it. I took some time to think about everything because my cats are my cats and I don't think they deserve any less just because I want to get a new pet. Even though it's not really just a pet, it's an assistance dog, but I didn't want them to like feel any less and uh, be excluded from my my bedroom or anything just because uh, I decided something new was going to happen. So it was very hard for me to manage um, how I will change the situation with my cats and if I can change it. At the end, uh, what I came up with was an actual dog box that I wanted to build that was um, that had a door like one of those doors where you have to have something um, like uh, what's it called the thing <laughs> around the neck leash you know that the the neck thing from your leash I'm so sorry I'm it was a while 
I'm so sorry, but it's been a while uh, of me just talking English because I didn't film that much, but you know, trying to explain that right now. Uh, the leash necklace, no idea, sorry. The, I call it niche like a necklace from now on. So uh, there you can have like a magnet or a chip or something like that. Magnet, a magnet or a chip or something like that. And uh, the door will open uh, if you come near with this collar. It's collar if you come near with your collar. And I wanted to give my dog that and the cats don't have it so they can't open the door. And uh, the dog has just like it was planning two meters uh, in, in width and at the beginning of also two meters in height so he could like go upstairs. But the trainer was like, that's too much. You don't have to do that. So I was just planning two meter um, in sides and uh, one meter height. And just space for him and uh, like his own little home in my home for him to calm down. And that was me finding a way where nobody has to like take themselves back. And the trainer actually loved that idea and she was so happy or so uh, surprised that I was caring so much and wanted him to come back but be um, happy. And so what we decided was that for a while my cats have to sleep outside my um, bedroom and he will stay in my bedroom as long just as it takes for the box to be made. And we would just slowly start um, meeting again and him being uh, with me for like two, three days, coming back to her and just taking everything slow, basically. But the first time he came back, I realized something because it, something changed and I didn't know why, but it was not like that clear bond we had it was something was different like we couldn't connect the same way again and the thing was he was kind of not getting better with me um, it was getting better but for me um, it became too chronical it's hard to describe like um, he changed when the trainer was there and with me, we were just getting back into the old routine and we tried to split that up and probably the best uh, idea would have been to like uh, start the thing over in the new home and with everything new so we don't fall back into that routine but it kind of became that and I was frustrated and he was, I know he was trying his best and I was trying his my best but I wasn't really feeling it anymore. I stopped seeing him and myself in the future. Like when I looked forward to things happening, uh, I didn't really see this working out. I wasn't like seeing him in my future. And it probably was just myself protecting uh, me from having to feel that loss again uh, that hard. But... I didn't think of this at the moment. I just knew something felt different and that I was worried about that. And uh, yeah. And so we stated that for a couple of visits we tried and uh, he came and he got back. And then when he came, uh, one day I was having... Like it was Father's Day, so we were meeting up with all the fathers um, in our family and having a big outside fest. And fest, is it a fest? Festival it is, but party. And we were having that big Father's Day party. And. And. <laughs> and with everything being outside, I wasn't that worried because he had plenty of space to run and I also like talked about how I could make this happen the best because we tried to avoid new people 
as much as we could at that second try, but small things should have worked. Uh, so I was like trying to uh, make him calm down and mm, trying to not be there as long s just for like e eating and then uh, one, two, three hours. That was the plan. And what happened was, um, and now I realize something else that I haven't told you. The second time we were starting to like get small bits of training in and not as much as we tried the first time but um i tried to go to a supermarket with him because he also should help me at supermarkets and my plan was not to train a lot with him but just to have him there and things changed so much between the first time we tried it which was at the good times like two three days uh after he has been with me we went to the shops and he was so, so good. Like, he was trained perfectly. He was just looking at me. We were walking and he tried sniffing because he was like, um, is that okay now that I have a different owner? But with me telling him, no, he was pretty much not doing it again. Just like small tries, but everything fine. And uh, when he was here with me the second time, it was completely different. So part three, <laughs> because uh, uh, not storage was full, but like the movie was getting too long, so the camera said stop. Anyway, so the second time we were, so the second time he was with me and we tried everything again, I went to the supermarket with him and his behavior was completely different and so not him and not what I was told about him. He sniffed everything. His no was uh, me saying no. He didn't really care. And I felt like I 
was handling a different dog than the way we were used to the first time. And at that point I was kind of like, is it me? Do you just not like me? Because with Katrina and everyone he was um, completely fine. Uh, apparently he was not um, at his best. But he was getting better. And something that came up next um, before the family was it still I just sorry I was jumping too far ahead was that um, I realized something in his behavior and him not eating still and even if he was like eating fine uh, for a while and that was that he may have something going on with his stomach And it clicked with my trainer for a second and she was like, that's it. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe he had gastritis, so like um, an inflamed stomach. And that was making his symptoms show as being nervous, barking so much, yawning and everything that was changing about his personality. We thought was uh, for a while, we thought it was the stomach problem. And everyone was happy for a while, but I think most of the damage had been done by now and yeah when he was with me for like the farthest day thing he was getting really strange because instead of being that calm dog he uh, started to run um, and try to jump up on people which he never did was what the trainer told me so confusing thing and that's when I realized that I was going to be a problem too because at first I had this big bond to him and although I hate to say it it kind of got different with everything that changed not that it's magic's fault at all like It was more a thing of that natural bond we had that I was not that that calm and trying to everything will work out and going in there easily. I was trying to force myself to be a certain way to get on with him. And although it was just a try for me to be better and learn new things, I actually realized that I was trying to act like I was a different person and I was masking for the dog, basically. And when he then jumped on uh, one of my cousins, which actually was the one and only one, uh, or, or not the only one, but I had only two family members who were scared of dogs, just a little or not, not 100% scared, but when a dog comes close um, and he's not calm, they freak out. So they were really nice about it. They were um, seeing that I tried and were just like <laughs> like that. But for me, it was shocking because I tried to like get him and uh, try to like say, hey, chill, that's, that's not going to happen. But the relationship wasn't the same anymore. And I was trying to just calm him down but things didn't work out as I thought so I realized although at the beginning everything was working out fine and I was really comfortable with doing those things with him I was getting shy and that's because um, I had like um, at, as a child I had uh, a friend with a big dog that kind of intimidated me and those things were coming back and I was too intimidated to think of a way for just a second uh, how I could like dissolve the situation. It was only a second but it was uh, for me just something I realized and was like maybe this won't work out. That was the first time I thought about it, but it was not like magic being a super bad dog or anything. It was just me realizing 
maybe there was too much damage done for this to work out for this to work out and the thing was with his personality at first and everything I was not caring at all about his size but uh, with him changing suddenly the size became a problem because if it was a small dog that I just like hold or um, like that was the size where I was like pretty comfortable with him because I could like um, my own uh, force my own powers were enough to stop him without me needing to throw him myself on him or hurt him in any way me just being chill like nope and that's enough like uh, I thought we don't have any problems uh, because he was so chill so I didn't think we would have so much problems that uh, I f I would get at a place where this would have become a problem so uh, of course this can always be the case and you need to be able to handle your dog but I thought um, at the beginning we could just train that away and things will work out because always I, because something that was always in me was that I won't judge an animal by its appearance. So I'm not saying I don't want that dog because he's all black and he's super boring uh, or I don't want him because he's too big. Uh, I thought to not make it about appearance but at that time I realized maybe that's something I do have to think about and what we did then was um, at that day he uh, went home and it was the first day where I was not sad that he is going home where I was actually relieved that he was not with me for the next two or three days and that's what I started to think about everything that happened and why I stopped seeing him in my future and why uh, I was thinking so different about this whole situation just to just a few days prior where I was actually happy and we thought we had fixed everything and it would just take some more time. But when I look back now, what I would say is that all in all, just too much happened and too many things were looking back um, not planned the right way. Because maybe when I would have gotten to know him slower, he would not have gotten so stressed that he would develop stomach problems and... Um, the first few uh, days and weeks of meeting him wouldn't like happen with a complete change of his behavior and me getting self-conscious. And um, what was uh, happening after that visit was that he would actually would go for a week to his actual trainer, that not my trainers, but uh, actual trainer who was living further away but knew him from since being a child. And I talked to her uh, during that visit and was like, how is she? Because how is he? Because I was really curious how he would behave with her. Like, is this a thing temporary because of stress or is this getting a pattern with us too? And uh, I called her and she told me he was perfectly fine and acted as if nothing happened ever. He was calm laying around. Playing with the other dogs she had. Because she's a breeder too. And. That was the moment. Where it clicked for me. Into being. Okay. Maybe this is a me and him thing. And that was the moment. Where I uh, decided to talk to my trainer. About all my concerns. And. Although I was hoping that we would find a way and he would have the perfect solution. It was the first time where I thought mm, 
I think this could also not work out at the end and not that we just need some more training and everything will be fine. And then we had a phone call with my trainer, his trainer and myself about talking about everything. And the main focus for me was like, do you think that this is just a beginner's problem or that those things will change? And what I completely understand was that they couldn't promise me that everything would change because a dog can act different uh, with different people, especially if kind of that pattern forms. And they were saying it, it could all be fine and he could get into the sweet dog. He would turn back to that sweet dog again. But they couldn't promise it to me and then they talked about if that's a problem for me and I said if he was my pet and I was not trying to use him as an assistance dog I would be totally confident for this to work out because all it needed was time and me like becoming more confident with him and everything else but if he's there to help me, I'm not sure if this is a task he can 100% fulfill for me. Not because of his problems, but also just about the things that happened between us and that bond changing so much. So um, there was a chance that there was a there was a chance chance. So, so there was a chance that we could have worked everything out. But at that point, I also was mentally so exhausted that I thought of changing my meds. And um, I said, I can put the work in, but I would need more therapy and more um, support for a while. And that's what kind of they told me were like, well, that seems not that great if you just need so much support with him maybe that's a bad sign and we talked about everything like hours we sat there and talked about everything and chances and it was not at all an easy decision but at the end um things we realized was that um if he would have been a smaller dog all his behaviors wouldn't have worried me that much because i would see it more lightly because I was 100% sure I can handle him and I wasn't that worried of him being weighing like half of my what I'm weighing and I'm not uh, in a in a like real fight I wouldn't stand anything against him um, that would have been different with a smaller dog just my my um, acting around him would have been more calmer if he would have been smaller just simply by my experience with smaller dogs and by me um my experience in general with big dogs and as a small kid where they like ran me over and everything that was still in my head although I knew that that's a completely different dog and that I just need training it was something that came up the more the relationship changed and they asked me stuff uh, about what if this happens and what if that happens. And uh, I was like, if you would have been smaller, I don't think that's a problem. And um, I don't think that worry me that much if he would have been a little smaller. I was talking about what if this and this happens to him. And uh, I was just answering far more confident when thinking of him just being a little smaller the the size I thought he would have had in the pictures that I saw of him and everything and I hated to say that and I was like I know I'm so like I know I'm so unfair uh, and I hate to um, make it about his appearance but um, I think if we would have been smaller that that wouldn't worry me at all so my two main things were happening like those difference in 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 our relationship 
that just came with all the problems with me losing him and my feelings about it and with him uh, changing so much and uh, just the different connection that happened because all of those things happened uh, made something that was minor to me like the size be a much bigger problem and uh, me and my trainer agree that if things would have never um, escalated that much and him not eating and him things getting so bad that he would have been having a break from all of this that he would have need a break from all of this then probably would would be a happy uh, team now and their size problem would have never been anything that i worried about and things would be completely different but those things happened and um something that was so important to me in that call is that I tried and I really tried and I felt so so like an a like completely I don't want to say any mean words because YouTube doesn't like them but I felt like I was an a and uh I uh, felt like I was giving up something that I just need to put more work in and that call was all about um is this the case or is it just an unfortunate situation that happened and uh, we can't change it anymore now? And after talking a lot, um, they reassured me that uh, I, I, they know I tried and they know that I put the work in. And we also had a conversation about like, maybe uh, with all that experiences, uh, a dog isn't just the right thing for me and that's when the whole thing about him being tinier uh, appeared and uh, all in all I'm used to cats and smaller animals and that's a thing of course but I am someone who can be a dog person in my opinion I'm someone who when I now see dogs after uh, everything that happened, I'm so completely in love with them. And the work you need on a daily basis, like going on a walk with him and um, like training him and everything, that was so much fun to me. And that whole relationship that formed at the beginning, it just was something that felt right. That still after having all of this bad st stuff happening, I was like, no, I don't think that it's, just a dog not footing for me i i think i i would have really loved to have a dog as an assistance dog helping me so what we decided in the end is that we would not try to um, work with magic and me anymore that was a hard step and like i cried so much and i'm tearing up right now too but um that that's something we we like won't like try again and then not and try again and everyone getting its hopes up and then it won't work because it's not good for us and not good for the dog and um, so we made the hard decision of um, stopping this whole process and instead we decided to look for a smaller dog for me and that process um, can take from one and a half years up to three years or whatever. The, the contract is signed for five years. They can have five years for that. And everyone wanted to make it as fast as possible because they know how much I care. And they uh, thankfully didn't question anything uh, after we had that talk we had a very honest talk and I feel um, still at a good place I feel uh, looking back I just feel like well um, it was a series of unfortunate things that happened that ended up with me not getting magic and it happened and that's how it is but I will look forward to the future and I will um, 
look at it as an experience I had to take to have a better relationship with the dog that I'm waiting for now. And it's so hard because I was like, it's if I was tipping a toe into my new life and uh, getting a little used to it and then stemming back two years. So uh, for a second I had those hopes up for um, me just um, finding a dog and we would train him and it would take half a year or so. And uh, he knew this um, idea was not going to work out, but I clin cl clenched, climbed, clinked, clinked, clinked to it. But I um, hold on to this hope for a while. So um, stepping back from magic would be a little easier. Yeah, uh, of course, that's not what happened, but we found uh, a just born a uh, small version, like, uh, uh, I'm not sure how the words are in English, but there was like the big poodle, the small poodle, the um, dwarf poodle and the teacup poodle. And we just went for one size smaller, so the small, smaller poodle that should end up around my knees in height which is perfect um he's not able to like do things like guiding me out of situations but he's able to show me the way out of situations that's just something he with a smaller size uh, cannot do because it would have been bad for his things but for his joints but that's something we decided that's also good for me and it's um Something I need to um, wait. That's a compromise we can make. So, uh, yeah, the small version of the poodle um, is already by now um, starting training. Uh, by training, I mean doing all those um, baby poodle stuff baby dog things you need to learn like um, learning how to drive <laughs> that sounds so weird no he's not getting his driver's license also she, he's a she sorry but i was like the dog he um but she's getting used to driving so we can meet for the first time because our plans are to have like meetings constantly so i get used to him her she gets used to me and she also gets used to the cats. So that's not something that will be a problem this time. Uh, so I'm just waiting for her to be able to drive and then uh, we can meet for the first time. And I'm really happy about that. She is called Hazel, which I love. And um, yeah, back to the learning stuff. She will learn how to like be a good puppy I guess and then uh, when she grows older she will learn basic things about um, being an assistance dog and then um, the last half a year she will start to learn how to be an autism assistance dog especially for me uh, the things that we will learn together then and we will just gradually start and when she's uh, with me will we'll con constantly with me then we will make the like final touches so it's um, puppy time as long as I don't know how long then um, it's uh, learning basic things and uh, um, last half of those one and a half years she will start to gradually learn more things specific to my needs so um, we are talking about not this Christmas, but maybe a Christmas present um, next year. Maybe more like January, but around that time, I uh, think things will work out. Now, there is one thing we have to keep in mind and I have to keep in mind. Uh, and that's that only after one, she's one year old, they will do a health check. 
and if she fails that health check then um, we can't go on and things have would have not worked out again now um, chances are not that high because she's not as big so joint problems aren't that big of a problem as with uh, big dogs but it's something uh, that we still have to keep in mind and I still have to keep in mind so I'm not like this 100% will be my future dog but this is probably the dog that uh, will be my future dog and I'm willing to see her and things don't work out but have a relationship with her and um, actually maybe and I only have thought about this a while is that maybe um, I will find a way to still be with her maybe I will give up on the assistance dog look I don't know how the future will look like for me how it will be in two years because then I will move on to a different part of med school where it's more clinic and in clinic he can't be with me any she can't be with me anyway sorry I'm still getting used to that after meeting two male dogs um but uh, there will be uh different ways where we will handle that situation uh, handle um maybe I will move into like more uh, move into a friend and we will share care like that or maybe I have a boyfriend then so I'm trying not to to plan too much because I don't know how the future will look like but um, maybe with a partner we we will find a way anyway but um, without keeping that without um, being so speculative uh, uh, what I look how I view the topic now is that I'm uh, looking forward to meeting her for the first times um, because things not going to work out is just something you kind of have to keep in mind anyways which I'm the perfect example for uh, I guess because magic was healthy and everything uh, but it still didn't work out so that's something you have to keep in mind anyways and um I love and I look forward to meeting Hazel and I hope things work out. But if not, I will relook at the whole situation. Um, will I get an assistance dog uh, from from the stair? Uh, will I get it now? Will I wait until I'm like done with med school and start then the process again? Or um, will I try a different school with more dogs? Uh, because there are like, it's just a tiny not that tiny but it's compared to Mira or anything uh, Mira for example makes also makes assistance dogs but is far away in Canada but just as a comparison they have a different like um, way of meeting fitting two pairs together the dog is already finished training and then you meet him so there are different ways to get to your assistance dog maybe I re re will rethink that way but uh main goal is to just keep it as it is and wait for Hazel and hopefully things will work out, which there is a higher chance that that will be the case. But I won't give up on um, dogs because I think they are super helpful and I fell in love with having a dog and I love animals and it will definitely stay that way. So that's everything about that. I know this was a long video there was a lot to tell and it wasn't easy to rethink everything I am calm now thankfully um, not as sad but it will always be a sad thing but obviously it's a very sad thing and I will always keep him in my heart he actually has a new owner now um, he's also still an autism assistance dog for I found that person on Instagram through a friend and honestly the first thing I found was why didn't it work for me then I uh, went on to hating myself for a bit uh, and then I thought that it's not very mature but 
then I also thought like I have I need to have this moment right now and then I can start being mature again and now I look at it as maybe for them that was the path it needed maybe they fit perfectly together and maybe this had to work that way and um I don't know, there are a lot of people who don't like the everything happens for a reason thing. I kind of look at it that way. Maybe there are many things that could have happened, but it happened like that anyway. So I'm going to look on the positives and um, I will work on meeting her maybe in the future. Um, and I will work on uh, seeing pictures of Magic and his new owner. And maybe one day we will like... Um, go on walks together and be great friends i i don't know i i will try to heal further yeah oh it's starting to rain <laughs> yeah that's it for today's video um for on filming i'm not sure if i will film a video for every second week or once a month uh, i'm trying to get back into it and i'm so sorry for it not being like that but everything about that will be in my next video so um, i hope you keep watching thank you for everything who didn't like this unfollow and uh, still um, is here with me I'm very thankful and thank you for letting me get that time that well needed healing time thank you and bye mm -hmm.